Let's go! Woo, let's go! All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have two very important people with me here, and it's an honor to have this conversation with these brilliant music makers who have sparked so much innovation in the K-pop industry. For you two, please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your background in K-pop. Yeah, oh, what's up? I you know, oh, snap! Oh, snap, what's up? I'm Chick, and I'm super excited to be here with the one and only Emma from React to the K. Thank you so much, beautiful, for having me. Thank you for being here. I am a K-pop singer and songwriter, been doing it 11 years this year, and I'm so blessed and honored to just have an opportunity to talk to the fans a little bit more and to be here with my brother, Dev Joints. It's about to be a special time together. So thanks for having me. I, I'm not I'm not going to top that at all. I mean, she did a great presentation and introduction to herself. I'm Dem Joints. You know what I'm saying? Singer, songwriter, producer. You know, I hate talking about accolades, so I guess we're going to talk about that during the uh, interview in terms of what you'll know me for. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be making the smashes sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. It's not like you... Okay, yep. Just downplaying the amazing talent that we have in front of us right now. <laughs> but today, we are specifically covering the smash hit, Shinies Don't Call Me. And I have a huge fun fact for you, too. Today is February 22nd. 2024 and exactly three years ago today don't call me was released what exactly this is literally wow. the third year anniversary of don't wow. call me oh wow. that's hard I had no idea. Me neither. Literally. Me neither. <laughs> Out of all days, we ended up choosing today for the interview. And so I think it was just meant to be. So a huge congratulations. That's hard. Oh, that's so amazing. That's amazing. It is. So let's get this interview started off with Ooh. what was the first thing that jump started? Don't call me. I will say, first of all, it was the vibes and the fact that we uh, connect how, how we connect. You know what I'm saying? When we um, first learned about we were being in the studio uh, when we were in Seoul. We already knew what it was going to be. You know what I'm saying? We knew each other from back in the Dizzy and knew what we were capable of doing when we got into the room. You know what I'm saying? So all we did was just go in there, close the door, and black out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask when you guys had met each other if it was this SM Entertainment Camp or if you had previously written together before. We've never, like, worked with each other before that, I don't think, but we knew each other because we were always in the studio doing two different sessions what yep. right yep. with the underdogs yep. yeah yep yeah but this was so, our first time being able to collab and we were and i remember South then Korea. we was like yo we got to get in we got to get in we got to get, get in, in. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got in and we got kick it and don't call me <laughs> we got kick it and don't call me what <laughs> that what? is insane fire <laughs> Fire. Shout out to uh, Myla and Kinsey as well, because they uh, definitely uh, were there with us and helping us get the Jammy Jams crack a lacking as well. They are the ones. Was it this camp that Don't Call Me was built from the beat up, or Dem, did you bring in any beats beforehand? Um, with Kick It, I did from scratch. Uh, Don't mm -hmm. Call Me was a scratch. Like, you know, sometimes I like to just create like a skeleton of an idea just like to get like mm. a loop out of my head or whatever. But it started mm. off with like that. So not that many tracks, you know, just for something to um try to get some ideas and write to, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and, and once the top line was on Don't Call Me, it gave me more ideas as to what I can add, how I can arrange it and that whole, that whole thing. Yes. Gotcha. So this, a lot of this came from Chick's inter interpretation of the skeleton that was there beforehand. Right, yeah. right. It was only that go, go. Go, 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 go. That was the Shit. whole beat. That was the that whole was, beat. That was it. That was all Kenzie and I had. But when we were in the room, we were like, let's go. And Kenzie <laughs> and I locked in. The track was just, the track told us everything we needed to know for the top line. Right. And once we threw it back to him, by the time he gave it back, it was crazy. It was crazy. When you were writing the top line, did you already have a sort of story or an emotion in mind? Like, was it right off the bat like, Mm -mm, don't call me. I'm in like, you know, like ending this relationship. You can't waste my time. Was it already that vibe or did Abs it start off with, you know, like the. No, it was oh, absolutely it was. don't call me. I think some of the original English lyrics are actually like your number is blocked. Like literally that was the concept. Like, do not call me if you don't want me. Hey, it still stands true. 
it, it, this is information for me too. You know what I mean? I heard the song was like, "Let's go." I didn't. I didn't push it to the side and be like, "So, uh, uh, everything's okay? What's going on in your life? Are you all right? Are you all right? Uh, everything's okay." <laughs> <laughs> Who you don't want? To, you don't want nothing not to, not to call you. What, what is what's going on here? And I'm telling you, those vocals came through, didn't they? It came through like they I was singing through. to somebody for real. They delivered. <laughs> Do you remember after chick after hearing this beat for the first time? What was the first section that came to you? Was it like the intro? Was it the rap? Was the yeah. the melody? So I approach a lot of my tracks the same way. So when they're as fire as this one, literally <laughs> Kenzie just press record for me, right? I just, just press record from the top and I knew it would be a guy record. So it's just like, check this out, girl. If you don't want me, don't call it. Like if you could jump into that bag right off bat, the melodies are going to find their way throughout. So I just you jump in and That's then true. Kenzie goes in. Wait, what'd you just do? Do that again. Wait, go back, fix this, <laughs> go up a little then down. Okay. And literally we're going back and forth, but absolutely from the top, all the way through because you're going to catch so much gold just push play <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of which so dan when you brought in these beats did you already initially have an idea for whether this is going to be a boy group or a girl group no i did not and the crazy thing about it is it only gave them that one beat <laughs> it's not like they picked from specific things i really wanted to hear what they can put on top of this because you know, at the end of the day, it's just like you have your ideas, but to get other ideas or different perspectives on something that you find unorthodox and then they go in there and murdered it. I was just like, what? Let's go. I didn't ask no questions. First of all, I just went to, just let me arrange. Let me, ooh, this gives me this idea. And I just went to town. Because it came as such a shock to the fan. I'm sure you saw all the messages of like, whoa, this is such a sound change for Shiny. And so there were rumors going around. Shiny in an interview said that um, the SM Entertainment, like the management ended up giving it to Boa at first. And then Boa was like, nah, like I think this should be for a boy group. And then so it, it eventually ended up in Shiny's lap. So right. initially when Dem Joints was writing it, it could have been for anyone. And right. then when you guys were together in camp, you knew it was it, like formed into a, just like any sort of boy group song. I felt like it was definitely a spin for uh for shiny you know what i mean mm, it was a little mm. bit uh harder and more aggressive and i'm all for that you know what i'm saying so i thought it was a great idea yeah as a shawl i want to thank you too for showing us a new side of shiny because for anyone watching who doesn't know this chick also wrote trigger for shiny on an Ooh. earlier album which is a darker sound and then dem joints went on to produce juice for shiny so we've got this whole new concept yeah. of shiny's strengths thanks to what you guys have written for them. Hey, so just hey. a quick little thanks to you guys. Appreciate y'all for listening. Uh, I mean, we're in the entertainment business, so you yep. always want to like surprise and shock and yep. you know what I mean? You always want those moments mm -hmm. uh, to like just keep your audience on the edge of their seat sometime. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like mm -hmm. we're making a movie, so you got to have a yep. scene, you know what I mean? To fit everything in terms of emotion, action, you know what I'm saying? Danger, suspense, you know what I mean? Yep. And you always want those moments. So why not go there? You know what I'm saying? Their albums should like tell a story like just like- It a, should always tell a story all the exactly. way through. If all the way through, and my mind is always, how do I bring about a melody that has not been heard yet? Like I am always pushing for a sound, even vocally. Right. What hasn't been done? What type of intro hasn't been sang, right? What type of verse hasn't been laid? Like, right. I'm right. always looking for the innovation of, so because it's going to give that, the fans, that shock value every time. Exactly. And that is what we live for. 100%. That's actually, I reached out to the fans on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. And all of them were wondering about these shock aspects, these unpredictable elements of this song. Lola Known asks, what inspirations did you draw from the song since it's so unique? The piano, the don't call me refrain, the Spanish sounding bridge. Some parts remind me of a musical even. I love it all. And Random Tara asks, did Southern rap from the 2000s play a role at all in the production? Uh, oh yeah, all the time, yeah. I mean, I feel like, first of all, the 90s and the 2000s was when the smashes was the smashing on the smashy smash. Period. Smash, smash, smash. Period. So we're always gonna always reference, you know, back to that because, psh, I mean, those are our classics. Those are our, you know, the, the golden years of uh, musical excellence. You know what I'm saying? So mm. we're always gonna reference back to that. Uh, and 
we appreciate the fact that it's always uh, well received when we do bring those elements in. You know what I mean? Yep. But uh, that bridge was fun because they wanted a build, uh, but they didn't give me any specific, uh, you know, references to how that build could happen. So I was just like, when that don't call me and that's all that was, I said that that piano. Bun, da -ba -dun, da -ba -dun, I was just like, because <laughs> I didn't want to do a regular like. You know the riser with the beat and mm -hmm. all crazy and i'm like what, mm -hmm. what else can i do to where it's like the suspense and the climatic moment of life you know what i mean so yeah. that piano thing i felt was perfect and they never came back with notes for that they that, that was one and done i don't necessarily want to you know do the the average thing it's got to cut right. through and right. i think about that every time i'm making anything for the matter how, how can i cut through how can i be different you know what wow. i mean how can i tell my story and then Ooh. To where now when you know exactly what to do when you hear what Ooh, it is. What a bar, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bars. <laughs> Get that printed on a t-shirt. Wow. I, I appreciate that idea. I'll be back actually. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chick, you match Dem Joints' energy so well <laughs> when he makes these sort of really unexpected, shocking changes. When it comes to the various sections that we go through, like this Twitter user said, it's sort of like a musical. Like, what kind of story were you imagining in your head as you were writing this? Yeah, something that is very important to me is to see them on the stage. To see that any artist I write for, like, I want to see them on the stage already. Like, I'm imagining the fans. I'm hearing them scream. I'm like, what comes next, right? When these lights come on and these pyro fire effects come up, what is being sang by 20,000 of people across an arena? 50,000 people. Did you have the video running or any of their videos running in the studio and TV in the st studio where you're recording? It depends. For this one, I didn't, but I do do that sometimes, 100% uh, to tap into it. But also what I've learned to do is I become the artist. I oh, become shiny and right, I feel right. it in that room. And I'm like, how are they moving? Depending on how you move will depend on how the cadence of your top line comes out. Right, 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 right. Depending on when you throw it to the next group member depends on how you end the note because you need right. that thing to drop. So when the next person comes, it comes. You have to literally be them in that moment. And that is literally how I create the top lines. And when you have a fire track, it's so easy. I'm, I was shiny before I even did a top line, okay? <laughs> ah, that shiny. track came in, Who I was like, both. I am the group. <laughs> <laughs> I am shiny. I am shiny. <laughs> Up next, Ahenti Way says, I love how cinematic and practically operatic in regards to the multiple distinct genre flares don't call me sounds. Is there a distinct production process for creating that auditory drama and tension? Well, that's the thing. Like, you're not supposed to know what you're doing. Okay. You're not supposed to have a specific go-to. It's like, you're the first to go adventuring into this jungle. You have no idea where you're going, but guess what? You're running. That's it. That's it. You're definitely running as fast as you can. You know what I'm saying? That's now, it. I might run into a tree and it might help, but it was well worth the run. You know what I'm saying? Because it's dark and I can't see anything. It's dark. <laughs> the, the analogy just keeps going because it's dark. Baby, you know? <laughs> but that's, it's just, you know, part of being creative. You're not supposed to know where you're going. You're supposed to just go with it. And then the ideas come as you're creating. Like, for an example, the piano situation. I didn't know I was going to do that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just thought to myself while I was in the middle of the bridge, like, I have to do something different. I don't want to do the rise. I don't want to do the big build up situation. Mm -hmm. So how can we still be high at the top of the mountain? You know what Ooh, I mean? What does yeah. that sound like? And let me just go ahead and press some 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 keys, some buttons. And then it just comes to you as it go. You know what I mean? Right. And I, I feel like just like with Chick, if she's writing, she knows the concept, but she doesn't know exactly what she's going to say. You just never know because you might a bar might come in and be like, oh, snap. What if I can say this? You know what I mean? And it's just coming to you and you're just running with it. Yep. That's literally that's literally how it happens. I think he just gave every upcoming creative, every established creative, literally the secret sauce. The you secret don't sauce. know. You shouldn't know. You should approach it as if it's a gift. It's new. I get to find another gem from heaven today. Exactly. I get exactly. to be here. It's not a formula. It's not science. It's heart and feeling. So 
exactly. absolutely. And just sing on key, and then at that point you could just create whatever you want. You just gotta be in key. That's the only thing you can't leave up to chance. Okay, right, right, you can't right, just right, pick right. your own you can't key. Do that. Yeah. But if you can get your key, you the rest is all imagination and all building with a team of people who are aligned. That's why it's so important to write with people that you know are great inside and out on a song and outside of a song, right? So Dem is the same person when we go to eat dinner in Seoul than he was in the studio. All there was day. no difference. It and that's stop. what I'm makes it. Hype. He's all ways <laughs> i don't even know i don't even know you're married how does your wife do it like is she calm <laughs> she has with me. what you mean She's so wrong, I'm like, ah, she go ah you know what i'm saying we do that all the way to the bed ah. wow so then all right skeleton you started top lighting and that's when the key changes came in afterwards because I have this written down. My my channel focuses on classical musicians analyzing K-pop. And so this song's harmonic progression just threw them for a loop. There's a little bit of G harmonic minor. Have you noticed though, even so when the, the key changes, the vocal stays consistent. Ah. It's crazy. The vocal stays consistent. There's no big change or harmonies that go mm -hmm. through the whole thing. They just kept it going so I could do whatever I want and build around it and it fit. Yeah, and already at this point, I'm sure, so Chick and Kenzie, you had already recorded all the vocal stacks and doubling and all of that. Yeah, I feel like we were done. By the time we gave it back to that first part, we, we, we me and Kenzie, the vocals. yeah, we usually just get it in one session. We're not really the let's come back tomorrow to finish type. It's just like, we gonna get it right now. <laughs> right. My mind is blown because there are so many, like, I wonder if you go into the session, are there like 20 vocal layers going on? Like it's- More than that, honey. That Way. shit was huge when they gave, <laughs> yo, y'all gave me a crazy, and not only that, but uh, in terms of how, so it can make sense when it comes back to me, what I do is I group all the vocals so that I can make it mm. more simple for me because the vocals and the beat is all separated in one track. And if it's like too many tracks, like a hundred tracks or something like that, I gotta have a drink or something. I don't know, it's, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's too much for me to handle. I'll be like, yo, it's, I'm scrolling way too much. So the cool thing about it is, is while I'm doing that and I'm like stemming vocals, like the backgrounds and turn them into a three track harmony situation, as opposed to like 12, and when I'm doing that to all the uh, vocals, I'm getting to know the song. Not only that, but while I'm doing a section, I'm like, okay, well, it's note to self that I got to go crazy right here. Whatever this is going to be, I got to do something here. This is going to be crazy. So by the time I get ready to get back to the beat, to simplify the, all I, I'm blacking out and I'm already knowing what, you know, what needs to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. What I try to do is if I am inspired by a sample, I'm definitely going to go back after that and try to figure something else out because I'm grandkids. Is relentless. Some grandkids <laughs> are relentless. Yeah, because that's the whole little intro. That's that's me doing that whole thing. Promise to tell the truth, the whole truth. Wait, the, 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 yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was like the number. That is you, and you just like you affect your voice a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the truth. Text. Like, yeah, yeah. And look, yeah. damn joints didn't top line on this, but damn joints is a fire top liner okay let's be very <laughs> let's be very clear like okay this is not a kick it interview but those raps <laughs> dim joints smash them in like one take okay let's be very clear so then i uh, promise to tell the truth nothing but the truth that was initially a sample but then you're like uh-uh let me just take it into my own hands that was just me just oh that was just you problem. that was that's just sample. me okay yeah yeah Ooh, you took chick's energy and you're like let's start it like this let's start it like this <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. What motivates you most as you're creating music? Is it the feedback from fans? Is it the people around you? Is it your love for what you're doing? You just like feel like, yep, that's it. If it's the jammy jam on the jammy jam and everybody yep. is loving it, yep. it makes me want to run back to the studio and keep creating oh. more. Like, oh, you don't like, mm -hmm. you like that? Oh right. shit. Well, guess right. what I'm about to do now? I'm about to wire your socks off again. You about to do it again and again and again. And not only that, but you learn from the overall uh, yeah. result, the song, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And then be like, okay, so how can I top that? Yes. You know what I'm Oof. saying? Such a word. It's such a word. It feels so good. And I think what a lot of fans don't understand 
especially for me, maybe Dem joins all his songs go, but all my songs don't go. Okay. Uh, when they go, they go, but you <laughs> still have seasons where you might have eight hits, but you still got two that were rejected and you still put your all into that too. And, oh, yeah. and so there's oh, yeah. still these ebbs and flows. So when something goes, it's always gratitude. It's never, I've arrived. It's never oh, everything oh, hits. No. It's like, wow, I did it again. I'm going to do it again. And it absolutely is the battery in our back because if we didn't have people just giving us like, good job, you know, we might get a little weary, but it is such <laughs> a blessing. It's a blessing. To be in a mindset to where I feel like I'm, though we've been doing this for a minute, the 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 level and height, we're just getting started. You know what, what I mean? We haven't even gone to the next level in terms of what that is just yet. We still, we still have yet to like make the... Yet. Smash of the smash, smashy yes. smash. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. But, yeah, uh, but we're always going yeah, to try to our best and you know what I'm saying? Just hit the ground running every time to make sure that we do the our, our very best. It's mission. Like there are days I do not want to show up to my mic, but because I know why I'm here, I I come to my mic. And right. when I and black see out. And I black out because at this point, it's bigger than me. It's about all the little black girls behind me that are wondering, can they do anything other than r and It's all the little black girls behind me that's like, hey, I want to be seen. It's all the women around the world that's like, wow, this woman loves God and she's showing up in a secular marketplace and it ain't, it ain't took her faith. It hasn't changed who she is. Like, it's right. bigger. So this mic, though it's small, it represents legacy. It represents something so much bigger. It's crazy when you say that because... The those the, the moments where you be like, you know what, I'm gonna push myself, even though I do not want to do that this. Part. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like taking time to like spend so much time on the edits and this and that and that yep. because I'm not being creative. But then you put your all into it. Yep. That and part, then you know. those be the ones those that be, be the, the ones. I knew you're about to say it. Those be the ones. <laughs> those be the ones. So <laughs> knowing that. Your attitude changes. You it you does. you self change your attitude. Nobody has to tell you Come anything. On. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We we about to preach on here, Emma. Don't get us started because we will preach. Okay. Hey, I'm this avenue for you to speak your mind, speak whatever you feel mm. is most important to you right now. That's what my platform is for. Hey, hey, hey. That is all right. And then we go quiet. <laughs> Hey, you've said so many things already so far in this interview that it's going to be incredibly inspirational for so many people watching right now. And to bring it back to one final question for Don't Call Me, uh, K-pop with V from X said, Hi, you both work with a lot of personalities and different work styles while creating music, whether it be fellow producers, songwriters, or artists themselves. What is something you appreciated about the other person when you worked on Shawnee's Don't Call Me together? First of all, Chick is super stupid talented. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand why she's only underlining my uh, hypeness. <laughs> and, and, and you know what I'm saying? Because she was right there <laughs> with me, first of all. She came into the studio dancing. She never stopped the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Because I played that loop first. And then, you know, she was like, that's crazy. And then we and get- that was it. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of like our regular dialogue, she came into the room getting her boogie on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wasn't even playing anything. She was just, you know, she came in two-stepping in the room. You know what I'm saying? So the energy was already there. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. It gave me reassurance that we about to go ahead and go crazy on this jam. And it wasn't even a jammy jam. I already knew she was going to go ham. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So just by the energy the confidence that we have in each other and know that we're going to do the damn thing on the damn thing. You know what I'm saying? That's exciting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, mm -hmm. where is this going to go? Because, you know, it's going to go somewhere. Something's going to happen. It's going to be a great situation. You know what I mean? To yeah. piggyback off of the excitement, what makes Kenzie so cool is that Kenzie sits in one place the entire session. Kenzie like, already know what it is. And I'm just jumping. She's okay? calm. I'm jumping off of couches. I'm rolling off the floor. She's calm because like, she, she she already knows. And you know she's what I mean? She you know what right? to expect. She already knew this was going to be a hit. She already knew. So she's like here, and I'm like, no, 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 and then so it's perfect. But I think what inspires me about you, Dim Joins, is all yes, your creativity, and you're 100 percent incredible when it comes to the music. But honestly, it is who you are as a person. Hey, like sincerely. Hey, 
watching you outside of the studio. You love people. You are the same to everyone. And when I was growing up in the industry, I was very feisty. I burnt a lot of bridges because I didn't have a bath. I was acting like my mama, just like, what's going on? And don't nobody touch my baby. But joints like to watch you handle your business so well, but then to show up in the studio so well, and then to love on people. So it is like, so I just want you to know that you're such an inspiration to me. Such hey, an inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you and guess what? Uh, we're going to end this by saying, oh, the jams that Chicken Eye will be creating. In oh, the, the jams. Oh, the jams. It is going down in a place called town when I tell you this. <laughs> oh, y'all don't even know. It's about to oh, be amazing. Oh, my goodness. Ah! <laughs> don't mind me we fangirling might do for a second. Call. Okay, you can call me now. <laughs> you can call. <laughs> <laughs> and this interview with okay okay at first i was saying don't call but now you can you're not going to go to voice anymore fee. it might be a fee but you can call me <laughs> Ooh, that's, why, oh. that's why i rock with you that's why i rock with you <laughs> speaking of any you know special projects that you're working on where can people support you is there anything that you guys can tease for our audience let us know you know we can't do that. What do you mean? Oh, never. No, never. <laughs> come on, come on, give us a little give us a little. Yes, I'm excited. Global. I'm excited. I'm excited for uh what's to come. I'm excited for uh, you know, uh our next releases and the different ventures and you know what I'm saying the saga shall continue in its highest glory possible. You know what I'm saying? So then for the time being, what fans can do to support you is just like find you on social media. Yeah, everything, them joints. Everything at the Chick Experience. And absolutely. And I have a really cool K pop boot camp series coming up where I'm Ooh, breaking down let's go, how, Chick -Chick! how we do these top lines. So <laughs> you guys definitely go over to the K pop academy to check that out. It's going to be fire. Amazing. Thank you so much, you two. This song has meant so much to me, just giving me mm -hmm. so much energy and so much like, no, I'm not going to deal your, with your bullcrap, you know, type of energy. Um, and they say bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> I did it. I'm Where not going to deal I? with your bullshit. Woo, let's go. <laughs> Your turn, uh -uh. Your turn. No. <laughs> Emma, you felt like, Emma sounded like she needed to get that out though. Like it came yeah. like listen. That came on, that, that a came on little heavy, didn't it? She, she needed that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's been a month guys it's a bit it's been a month so yes this song has provided me the energy that i need in my mm. life in the past couple of years so this has just been an absolute honor and i'm so glad this happened on the third year anniversary hey. of the song thank you, you emma thank you guys so much, thank you so much.